In this section, we'll learn how to model a vessel as an anchor in an existing piping model. We will be modeling according to this configuration. So from the data set, I'm going to open up the model called Vessel 1, located in the Model Vessel as Anchor folder called Vessel 1. This is the piping that will be attached to our vessel that we're going to analyze. The attachment point is up here at A9. So we're going to continue to model the connection to the vessel by using flanges, a pipe run, the nozzle component, and an anchor. So I'll select A9 as my active point, and I'll insert mating flanges to represent the connection to the nozzle. I'll select them as weld neck, 300 pound pressure rating, and I want to insert both of them. Next, I'll insert a small pipe run which will represent the protruding length of the nozzle. This is going to be 1.15 feet long. Next, I'll insert the nozzle component, which will represent the thickness of the vessel wall. So the length will be 0 0.06 feet. The vessel radius is 1.8 feet. The vessel thickness is 0.75 inches, so the same as the 0 0.06 foot length, but this input is in inches. We will be using the WRC 297 flexibility method here. The L1 value from the nozzle connection to the top of the vessel is 26.25 feet, and the L2 value from the nozzle connection to the bottom of the vessel is 45.93 feet. When I press tab, you'll see that the radial, circumferential, and longitudinal stiffnesses are calculated for me. And then I'll just define the direction of the vessel axis as global Y. Remember that this command allows the pipe connections to cylindrical or spherical vessels to be modeled. And based on the values that you've entered and the current pipe properties, AutoPipe automatically calculates these stiffnesses for the translation degree of freedom along the nozzle axis and for the two lateral bending degrees of freedom using the Bigelard theory. The two translations that are perpendicular to the nozzle axis and the torsion degree of freedoms are all assumed to be rigid. Lastly, I'll insert a rigid anchor at this point, but I do want to put in some thermal anchor movements to represent how the vessel will grow in the thermal case. So my dx is going to be 0 0.028 inches, and my dy is going to be 1.151 inches. And I can accept this by clicking OK. If I open the input grid and go to the Imposed Displacements tab, notice that Imposed Displacements have been applied to all three supports along my piping. These are added to represent the thermal expansion of the vessel at these joints because these supports will be supported back to the vessel in this example. So notice that they're combined with the T1 temperature case. I'll set up my static analysis by coming to Analysis, Static Analysis Sets. And notice that there's a single analysis set defined, including gravity and T1. We'll click OK. Then we'll come to the Analysis ribbon tab and select static to run the static analysis. It quickly runs through and we can review our results by coming to the result ribbon and selecting the code stresses option from the interactive grouping. I'll review the ratio of my actual stresses compared to the allowable stresses for an envelope of all of my combinations. And my highest stress is up at point A10 with the ratio of 0.14. This is occurring in the hoop stress case, and clearly this is very low and within acceptable limits. If I open the result grid to review results as well, on the displacement tab, if I scroll down to point A11, where my 
anchor is, which is representing the connection to my vessel. Notice in the thermal one case, the values shown are the values that we entered in for our thermal anchor movements. This completes the example of modeling the vessel as an anchor. As a reminder, the pros for this method are that it's very easy to model and the nozzle loads can be transferred directly to auto pipe nozzle or auto pipe vessel. But the cons are that it's only really acceptable for your gravity and temperature loads. If you have occasional loads, this method isn't the best method to use. Also, it produces a stiffer system and affects the dynamic results, so it's not the best method for dynamic analysis either. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.